In this video, we will continue our overview of the basics of municipal wastewater treatment. In our last video, we had just finished reviewing what it was we were treating and why. In this video, we will now look at how we treat each of these characters. Looking back at our treatment schematic, one thing you notice is that it flows. The majority of these processes are what are known as continuous systems. So they do their thing while the flow is moving through them, as opposed to batch systems, in which the process would occur in a static fashion. So in our soup bowl that we created, if we treated everything right here in this tub, it would be a batch process. Since we are going to be going over continuous processes, let's get our crew moving. Just about every treatment process fits into one of three categories. Physical separations, biological breakdowns, and chemical addition. It's really that simple. Physical separations are those that separate two things based on their physical properties. So this could be based on particle size, such as a front-end screen that has openings big enough that trash and other debris get removed and everything else goes through, all the way down reverse osmosis filters, whose openings are so small that just about the only thing going through is water. Physical separations could also be based on weight, like in clarifiers, where anything heavier than water drops to the bottom for removal and everything else floats on. Biological breakdowns are when we create the optimal conditions for certain microbes to thrive and pretty much sit back and let them do their thing, which is to ingest and break down complex organics, or what we have been referring to as unstabilized biological material. How we create these optimal conditions is mostly through the addition and removal of oxygen, and sometimes a combination thereof. Chemical addition is when we, well, add chemicals to the stream for various reasons. Mostly, it is to make two items that have the same physical properties have different physical properties so we can separate them using the first of the three categories of treatment we spoke about. This could be adding chemicals to make lots of small particles clump together and be bigger so they can be filtered, or heavier so they can be settled out, or using other chemicals to change the pH of water to make something that was once in solution out of solution to be filtered. Well, you get the idea. One other use of chemicals is to kill pathogens and viruses, and that's pretty much it. Now that we have established what we are treating, why we are treating it, the basic types of treatment we use, and whether we treat things in a batch or a continuous process, we can finally tie it all together. Sometimes you have to circle the airport a couple of times before you can land the plane. So, back to the soup. The first thing we want to remove are the large inert objects. This is done in the first step of our schematic. We do this primarily utilizing physical separations. This can be done by inserting a screen inside the channel, known as, wait for it, in-channel screens. There are then three basic ways these guys get the collected solids out of the channel. One is by rotating the screening material like a belt. The second is to have the static screening material and using externally moving parts to do the lifting, like rakes or screws. And the third is to make the screening material like steps that oscillate to lift the material out. The alternative to in-channel screens is to take the incoming flow to the plant and pass it through a rotating drum made up of permeable material, or a screen, known as a rotating drum screen. Still the same concept though. Big stuff stays in, smaller stuff goes out. Now that we have the larger stuff taken out of the channel, we need to transport it away. This brings us to the second stop on our treatment schematic, screenings, dewatering, and conveyance. As with the first step, we will be using physical separations here. In order to transport the screenings via truck to a landfill, we have to remove enough water so that they pass something called a paint filter test. Which means, if you set the solids on a paint filter, they would be dry enough that no water would pass through. To do this, we first need to remove any organic material, which is high in water content. We do this by washing it out. Now we can compact the screenings and get all of the water out. Then off to a landfill, which completes this path of our treatment schematic. And that's about all the time we have for today. Stay tuned for the third introductory video where we will continue to cover our treatment schematic. This video was brought to you by the innovative engineers at Parkson. Click here for the next video in this series. And if you found this video helpful, please be sure to like and share. If there's anything water or wastewater related you'd like to see in a future video, be sure to let us know in the comments section or on our Facebook, LinkedIn, or Twitter pages.